Hey, digital founders, founders, as a 4K monitor user, I have to consistently use DLSS to maintain over 60 frames per second on my 4070 Ti slash 5600X machine in demanding games like Cyberpunk 2077. With this uh. in mind, should I be looking at native 1080p slash 1440p benchmarks instead of native 4K ones to get a more accurate idea of how a game will run on my system? Thanks and keep up the killer work! Exclamation point. Man, this is a, a really interesting and tricky question. Um, but one thing I'd like to say before I hand this over to Alex is that when you look at a benchmark in a game review, or sorry, a GPU review, and you see, for example, I don't know, um, just off the top of my head, dying light, average frame rate, uh, 70 frames per second, just off the top of my head. That's no guarantee that your entire experience in Dying Light 2 is going to be 70 frames per yeah, second. Plus 60, seconds. yeah, anything. But yeah, it's basically just a snapshot of a very small piece of content. And the, the main purpose of a benchmark is to basically see how different GPUs run the same content and to get an idea of how much faster one is than another. You can't really use these benchmarks unless you do like a full extended gameplay run through to get some idea of, okay, this GPU runs game X at Y frames per second. But it is an interesting question, right, Alex, because you, in theory, you, you, you know, on the face of it, DLSS quality mode is 1440p upscaled to 4K. Therefore, you know, common sense suggests that I should be looking at the 44EP benchmark, but that's not really the case. It's not entirely true. One, there's the DLSS cost, um, which I think is yeah. going to be around, I want to say it's a little bit over a millisecond for a 4070 because it's it's half of a millisecond for 4K on a 4090. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit over a millisecond, I think, on a 4070. Um, so you got that cost. And so it's going to, you're going to, whatever you look at the 1440p benchmark, it's going to be more expensive. But then also DLSS, depending on the game, it's going to be running things like post-processing, uh, perhaps, and per design, usually at the native resolution. It should be doing it that way for the highest quality, according to NVIDIA guidelines. And that'll make it more expensive, sometimes quite a bit deal more expensive than whatever a normal 1440p would be, like in a scene with like, like really big bokeh depth of field shapes right in the camera. So, so it's not a, a perfect thing. And in this case, I think you'll get a better idea than looking at native 4K, for sure. The real reason why yes. DLSS uh, <laughs> exists is because native 4K is stupidly expensive and why we care about native 4K benchmarks. Um, but, uh, so I would say you're doing a better job looking at them, but you should also, if you can find a number of places now are starting to do upscaled benchmarks. Um, some of them are not a lot and it's once again still like richard said like the snapshot so it isn't representative of the entire experience for that you need actually dedicated reviews of games and uh, a number of places put them out i want to say you know a whole bunch computer base puts out uh for larger games like reviews and like what they think of the entire performance over the like the entire package and we do that too other outlets will do that occasionally. Um, so look more towards those. And I would actually say less so than GPU benchmarks, go to a forum that has a PC performance thread for when a game releases. And you'll be seeing people there posting their their results. And sometimes I don't trust them always because I've seen so many people just say like, oh, this camera's fine on my rig and it's 100% <laughs> objectively a stuttering mess. Um, but you know, like they'll, they'll give you a sense of at least GPU limited workloads and in, in Fora if you go there and read them. So I'd say that's actually yeah. almost even better than reading benchmarks going to form. I mean, at some point we're going to get our merch situation sorted, Alex. And I do think we're going to need a, uh, it works fine for me. It works fine on my PC. <laughs> yeah. I'd love that one. I'd love that one. I'd wear it. <laughs> yeah. It's a tricky one, right, John? I mean, you yeah. know, you, there's so many... Uh, well, put it this way. There's an infinite combination of potential benchmarks that you could run for any given game. And uh, I just don't think benchmarks should be used to deliver anything other than a, a potential snapshot of... I guess, you know, what you could do is... Um, and it would take a lot more time, is to basically, you know, find a really demanding level and just play the whole thing through. Sure. Um, and then you'd have like an average frame rate metric that might prove meaningful. But even then, it's not the average that's that's typically the problem. It's the 
it's the lows and why they're low, yeah, yeah. as we talked about earlier on. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, it's a tricky one. That is tricky. 